This video discusses the intricacies of netting Section 1231, Gains and Losses. Section 1231 provides that the gain from the sale or exchange of a depreciable property used in a trade or business is treated as capital gain, and a loss from the sale is treated as an ordinary loss. Taxpayers, therefore, get the best treatment available, preferential rates on the gain, and the ability to duck the loss against ordinary income. In addition, as we will see in a minute, Section 1231 also governs the treatment of net gains from the involuntary conversion of business property arising from fire, storm, shipwreck, or other casualty, or from theft. Net gains from these casualties are combined with other 1231 gains and losses to determine the ultimate tax treatment. Congress was generous when it passed Section 1231, but it wasn't ridiculous. Taxpayers don't get the best of both worlds on each asset. Instead, they need to net 1231 gains and losses. If net 1231 gains and losses produce a gain, the gains are capital gains. If net 1231 gains and losses produce a loss, the losses are ordinary. The process of netting gains and losses involves the throwing of all the gains and losses into the main pot, called the hotch pot. Section 1231A4C treats one type of asset, certain losses from involuntary conversions, differently. If the taxpayer has gains or losses from the involuntary conversion of property used in the trade or business, those gains and losses are netted first in what we call the sub pot or the fire pot. The first part of the netting process, therefore, involves throwing all the gains and losses covered by Section 1231A4C from involuntary conversions arising from fire, storm, or shipwreck into the fire pot. If these losses exceed gains, so there is a net loss, then Section 1231 does not apply to these losses. They are reported on the return. The character of these losses is not determined by Section 1231, but by other provisions in the code. These involuntary conversions are generally considered ordinary losses, either because property used in a taxpayer's trade or business is not a capital asset, or because the involuntary conversion by casualty or theft is not a sale or exchange. If gains from involuntary conversions exceed losses, all the gains and losses from involuntary conversions are tossed into the hotchpot. You then net the gains and losses in the main hotchpot. If the netting of 1231 gains and losses produces a gain, then all the gains and losses are capital gains and losses. If the netting of the 1231 gains and losses produces a loss, then all the gains and losses are ordinary gains and losses. After 1231 helps determine whether the different 1231 items are capital or ordinary, other provisions of the code determine how the item is taxed. For example, if an item is capital, other provisions of the code would determine the capital gain rate on the item. The graphic in the book explains this in the aggregate. First, net 1231A4C gains and losses from involuntary conversions in the fire pot. If there is a loss, then report the loss. These do not go into the hotch pot. If there is a gain, the casualty losses and gains are thrown into the hotch pot. If the result of the netting is gain, all gains and losses are capital gains and losses. If the result is a loss, all gains and losses are ordinary. The names may make this seem confusing, but the basic idea is that you net all 1231 gains and losses. If you have gains and losses from involuntary conversions, then you need to net them in the fire pot first.